Hello and welcome back to NBC Sports Podcast. My name is Andrew Sullivan, joined by Connell Scruggs, J.P. Eisenhower, and Andrew Feeney. As we take a look back at last week, Marist defeated Hapeville 30-0 to in what we thought would be a pretty competitive football game. Um, it was really for the first half until Marist scored a late touchdown to go up 16-0 to at halftime. Really should have been 9-0 or even 7-0 at halftime for the War Eagles. And then second half, uh, some more of the same. Marist ended up winning 30-0. to Defensively looked very strong. Feeney, what impressed you the most from the War Eagles last week? What I was really impressed by was the defense. And, you know, coming into the game, Hapeville, Hapeville was hyped up to be one of our toughest opponents that we played this season. And going into it, um, I was really shocked by how well the defense played, um, holding them to a shutout. And, the you know, the offense really didn't get going until near the end of the second quarter, like you said. But once they did, the defense stayed strong, didn't allow any any points offensively. So that was really impressive to me. Yeah, I think one thing to take note of, uh, Davis McKenna uh, injur- injury that uh, cost him uh, last week coming out of the game, and then ultimately it turns out it was a torn ACL, which uh, we really hate to see for him. He was had a lot of promise. The whole offensive line had a lot of promise. Um, so he's out for the season. Um, so we're really sorry to hear that about Davis McKenna. Um, it'll be interesting to see who replaces him at left tackle, but the whole the whole offensive line is very strong, and I I have no doubts that they'll still be able to run the ball against most opponents this year. Um, but sad to see that for Davis McKenna. As we uh, note that this week's football game against Druid Hills has been canceled, Maris will not be back in action this week. Uh, they will not be back in action until next week at Arabian Mountain. Um, Druid Hills, unfortunately, had to forfeit the rest of their season. They had just some personnel issues, were unable to uh, have enough players on their team due to COVID issues and injury issues. So they had to forfeit their season. Another thing that was uh, we really hate to see, and we uh, really feel sorry for Druid Hills, but no football game this Friday. As we take a look at the 4A composite rankings this week, number one is still Marist, and then Jefferson, no surprises there. I would expect those will be your one-two throughout the regular season unless one of those teams suffers a surprising loss. Um, Maris still has to play Stevenson, uh, but Jefferson already faced Flowery Branch, likely their toughest region opponent. So both teams expected to remain perfect throughout the season, likely we will be one and two heading into the playoffs in a few weeks. Benedictine at 3-5-2. and two. On the season, Carver Columbus, a big win over LaGrange last week. That one was very close, 7-6 to six at halftime. Carver Columbus pulled away to win by multiple touchdowns in the end. Um, they're probably the heavy favorites to win their region, and that offense is explosive. Bainbridge at 5-2-3 and three on the season. Stevenson 2-0 and oh at number 6. Marist will face them in a few weeks' time. Flowery Branch number 7. Cedartown 8. Islands nine and Hapeville still sneaks in at number 10 to round out your top 10 this week as we transition into games of the week in the state of Georgia. A couple big ones in 5A this week. A classification that really is intriguing this year. So much talent now um, in 5A that it'll, it'll be, I mean, I couldn't pick a winner right now if you asked me to on who would uh win that one it's really tough to to pick but our first game of the week here starting us off blessed trinity and calhoun blessed trinity number two and 5a calhoun number six and 5a this is the first of three matchups that will really decide the winner of region seven 5a probably just the toughest region outright in 5a with blessed trinity calhoun and then cartersville uh, in 5A, Blessed Trinity's number two, Cartersville number four, Calhoun number six. Really similar to last year when Marist and BT were playing in the same region that had four teams in the top 10 of 4A. Uh, really just the group of death there in 5A. And Cartersville also, I believe, recently got a transfer in Carlos Del Rio, the Florida committed quarterback that'll give them a boost certainly there. But let's talk more about this Blessed Trinity Calhoun matchup. Uh, Justice Haynes has been just an outright star for Blessed Trinity. They've only played two games and they're 2-0. They haven't played a game in 
uh, four weeks time. It's been, well, they've been off for three weeks, but it's been almost 28 days since they've played a football game. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see how they respond early on in this one as Calhoun's five and one played four more games than Blessed Trinity, something that's just stunning to hear. Justin Haynes has rushed for 107 and then 255 yards in his two games. So up over Jeez. 350 yards in two games. Four touchdowns as well. J.C. French is 14 of 16 on the year for 377 yards and four touchdowns. Talk about just an explosive offense with the quarterback transfer in French from Westland. Just tough, tough to defend. It's like Marist from last year when Connor Sigelski was at quarterback. Just two, you can run the ball, you can throw the ball, and it's tough to predict. Calhoun, on the other hand, they're only lost to Macaulay out of Tennessee, a boarding school that's one of the top 10 ranked teams in Tennessee. So can't hold that one against them. The Yellow Jackets have a trio running back wide receiver and quarterback trio and Christian Lewis, who has thrown for over 1,200 yards, Jerry M. Hames, who's rushed for over 650, and Cole Spear, who's also received for over 650. So really just an explosive offense. Blessed Trinity, last time they faced Calhoun in the 2015 3A semifinals, BT was the number two team in 3A and Calhoun the number one. Blessed Trinity won that one 12-7. I think we'll see a few more points in this one. I'll have Blessed Trinity by two touchdowns, though. But this is a this is a tight one, I think, Connell. Right. Uh, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with Blessed Trinity. I just think, you know, you you look at Justice Haynes that that attack on offense in the rushing game, and then J, then picking up JC French. Wow, that when you add a passing attack to PT's offense, that that is going to be kryptonite for almost any defense. So it's going to be hard to stop them. I'm also going to agree with you, and I'm going with BT. Yeah, I agree with you, Connell. And so I think it's really tough offense to stop. I'm going BT. Yeah, I think they're going to come off that four games without a get, without playing at all in a 20, uh, 21, I guess it would be day quarantine with a win over uh, Chick Calhoun. Connell, second one here. Absolutely massive game between the number one and number two ranked teams in single A private. It's Athens Academy, who's 6-0. and Prince Avenue Christian, who's 5-1. and That's 1-2 and respectively. Single A private. Who do you like here? This is going to be in a really exciting game. And before uh, I get into who I'm picking, we'll just start off with a little preview of the game. Athens Academy has won the last four meetings in the last four years. Uh, quarterback Brock Vandegrift, who is a five star and committed to UGA, didn't play last year um, in that loss versus Athens Academy. And I'm sure looking at the quarterback situation at UGA, they probably want him on campus as soon as possible. But, anyways, this year, He's completed 69% of his passes for over 1,600 yards, throwing about 280 yards per game. Uh, His star receiver, Logan Johnson, has 30 receptions for 562 yards and nine touchdowns. And then the really the star offensive player other than Brock Vandegrift on that team is Landon Owens. He's got 1,100 all-purpose yards, and he's kind of split evenly between rushing, receiving, and returning. So I'd watch out for him on offense. They're scoring almost 50 points per game. Uh, They're averaging almost 50 points per game, which is the most in Class A private. But they're going up against an Athens Academy team who is allowing only 8.3, which is the fewest in Class A private. Um, So this is going to be an offensive versus defensive battle here. But, you know, the thing is, Athens Academy is also pretty prolific on offense. Quarterback's doing well, almost thrown for 1,000 yards. They have AJC Super 11 wide receiver. Um, And, you know, just the fact that Athens Academy can compete with Prince Avenue Christian. They're not quite the offensive team that Prince Avenue Christian is, but they got the defense to back it up. I think in in one of the toughest games, I'm going to have to pick Athens Academy here. I like that pick, Connell. Defense wins the championships. I got Athens Academy here. I think they really showed their worth last week on defense, the defense side of the ball, holding Wesleyan to three points, I believe. Yep, and Um, 71 yards of total offense. Just a staggering staggering total there, but they're going up against a very good offense. So it'll be a good matchup. It's only a one point uh, diff, uh, spread here. Prin- Prince Avenue is the underdog Athens Academy favored, but I'll, I'll take Athens Academy in a very close one. Yeah. I'm going to agree with both of you there. Um, offense is for show defense makes the deal. I'm going to go Athens Academy. <laughs> 
Not last week. <laughs> you know, the last time I picked it, picked against all three of you and picked Prince Avenue, they let me down. So I'm going to take Athens Academy in this one. Uh, I thought he was going to go. For yeah, Prince no, Avenue. I'm not. Yeah. I, I'm I not trusting Prince Avenue anymore. For, for I once, thought we were going to hear, so I'll do it again. And <laughs> no, for not once, this time. For once, I'm hoping defense prevails over offense here. Kinda yeah. Last week, Alabama, Georgia, I kind of wanted the offense to prevail over. Their the one JP, loss was the one time I picked them. JP, real quick here. Uh, Another big matchup in 5A, the number one ranked team in Ware County, who's 5-0, and versus Coffee, who's 5-1. and Who do you have? Well, there's a reason Ware County is the number one team and a very talented 5A this year. Thomas Castellanos ran for 166 yards and a touchdown on 22 carries last week and was also 16 of 26 passing for 296 yards and three touchdowns. They beat Bainbridge 35-30. He now has 3,265 passing yards on his career and 2,264 yards rushing. They're averaging 39.4 points per game, and they've performed well while playing a really tough schedule. I'm taking Ware County in this one. Yeah, I think it's a close one here. When you look at a similar opponent, I mean, you're tempted to pick Ware County just because they're undefeated and coming off big wins over Bainbridge and Benedictine. Um, But when you look at similar opponents... They've both faced Bainbridge and Ware County won 35 to 30, whereas Coffee won 31 to 16. I think the reason where uh, Coffee is down in those rankings is because of that loss to Houston County, 17 to 10. But some people might forget that Houston County is a 7A school, so or 6A school rather, a very big school. Um, so tough competition there. I believe they're now into the rankings in 6A. It's a really tough one again here to pick, but I think I'm going to go with coffee in this one with the upset. I am going to go with JP here. I'm actually going to go with Ware County. I think it's going to be important for Castellanos to establish a quick connection with his two star receivers. And the problem, you know, the problem for Ware County has been a little bit of the defense. They haven't really had the strongest defense of attack, but I think important in this game, they're going to need to spread out the coffee defense and just basically outscore coffee to win this game. I'm really shocked there, Solo, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to change my pick. I'm sticking with Ware County in this one. It's going to be a close one. It's going to be close. uh, Coffee needs to really play good defense as they have for the whole season. I mean, the most they've given up was 17 points in that loss to Houston County. Um, I just really like that win they put together against Bainbridge by multiple touchdowns. I think this one's another close one. As we look at our final uh, matchup here of the week in the state of Georgia, this one's the big 7A matchup this week. Roswell versus Cherokee. Again, a big region matchup. Roswell's number 8 in 7A. Cherokee number 6 in 7A. Both teams undefeated 5-0 and and 6-0 and respectively. They're also in the same region as Milton whose one loss comes to Cedar Grove, the top-ranked team in 3A. So a really talented region here. Three teams that will probably be in the top 10 in 7A come state tournament time. Cherokee broke a five-game losing streak in this series last season, taking a 21-0 halftime lead, holding on to win 21-14. They have not won this region in since 2002, so 18 years. They have just a talented trio of junior wide receivers. AJ Swan, over a thousand yards. Um, Keith Adams, sorry, a thousand yards passing for AJ Swan. Talented trio of juniors here. Keith Adams, 740 yards rushing, 102 receiving, and a Darius Harshaw, 381 receiving. That's accounted for all but 32 of their team's total yards. So, really, a three man attack here. Roswell, similar balance. Robbie Roper is their quarterback, also thrown for over 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. I got a close one here, but I'm going to have to go with Cherokee. Roswell's the more story, more storied program here. Cherokee's brought it on in the last few years. I think they have a chance to win this region title this year. All right. This is probably not smart of me, but I'm going to disagree with Andrew Sullivan on another high school pick here. I'm going to go with Roswell. I think these teams have two very similar philosophies, two very similar styles of play. But I just think, you know, the team that forces the other to adapt and kind of get off their game plan is going to win. I think Roswell's played tougher competition this year. um, And for that reason, I think Roswell's going to take this game, although probably close. 
this was a really hard pick. This was really difficult. But at the end of the day, I think I'm going to stick with the higher-ranked team. I think I'm going to just stick with Cherokee in this one. Yeah, I think Cherokee edges this one out over Roswell. And to update you on our point standings and picks, I'm currently in first place with 39, 24 and 4 in high school, and 12 and 6 in college with one upset pick. Connell's 32 points, 17 and 11 in high school, 12 and 6 in college, and an upset pick. JP at 31, 21 and 7 in high school, 10 and 8 in college, and no upset picks. And Feeney, 27 points, 17 and 11 in high school, 10 and 8 college, no upset picks. As we move into college, Quick recap, last week, Georgia, Alabama, Connell, what did you see that surprised you but also impressed you out of the Alabama offense? I mean, I think, you know, going up against the number one defense uh, in the country, I didn't really I didn't really expect Alabama to come out and score that much. I knew their offense was extremely prolific and the horizontal speed that Bama uses in the game and their schemes in that kind of West Coast offense that Sarkeesian has going. It's, it would be tough for Georgia to defend, but I didn't think it was going to be run that well. I think, though, in the game, Georgia had a lot of the momentum in the first half. They were keeping Bama on the field on defense, converting a lot of third downs, and Alabama was kind of getting stopped on third downs on offense. Georgia was doing a pretty decent job of keeping Alabama from just running away with it in the first half and actually had the lead. I think that um, that field goal was huge that Alabama made at the half, I think in shifting the momentum and then the turnovers they started to get in the second half kind of got the defense going for Alabama um, and gave them a little bit of confidence. And then from there, the offense just kept rolling and it, you know, Georgia really couldn't do anything. Yeah. I, I was shocked going into last week that I expected, I, I picked Georgia to win, but I expected a really close game. I thought it was a toss up, but by no means. And I don't think the score really represents how the game went because, as you said, Connell, the first half was completely different than the second half. But um, still, I thought Georgia could have pulled that one out. I uh, just They f- f- offensively did not do well in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah. yeah as, as we take a look at our picks for this week in college, we'll start off with Oklahoma State, Iowa State. Connell, this is a big one. I think it's big for both teams, but probably even bigger for Oklahoma State. I'm just not sure that the name recognition for these under-leveled, under less well-known programs below Texas and Oklahoma will be big enough to get them into the playoff with one loss this year. So I think for Oklahoma State, this is massive. One of their biggest games so far this year to try and keep that undefeated streak going and just keep the possibility of making the playoff alive. Who do you like? All right. Uh, in this one, I think... Oklahoma's probably Oklahoma State's got the upper hand in this one. I think their, their rushing attack leads the Big Twelve. Uh, they have Chuba Hubbard, and also they're going to get probably they're going to get their quarterback Spencer Sanders back after he's healing his ankle injury, which is going to be huge for them. Um, they've been operating without him for the past couple of weeks, um, and also their defense is extremely good on third down. I think that's huge. They only um, allowed the opposing offense to convert seventeen percent of their chances against them. So I think you know combined with that rushing attack, the quarterback coming back. And also their their third down defense. I think it's going to be a little bit too much for Iowa State to handle, even though Brock Purdy and the Cyclones have kind of been on a roll. I got Iowa State in he, in this one in an upset. Uh, Corn Jesus, as they like to call Brock Purdy. <laughs> um, I think he gets it done. Iowa State looked impressive against Oklahoma, and I think they're really hoping that this is their year to potentially win a Big Twelve championship with all the other teams down. I have been extremely underwhelmed by Brock Purdy's performance so far this season. I expected him to come into the, come into the year honestly as probably a top three, top four quarterback in all college football, and he has not played that well so far. I mean, he hasn't played badly. It's just, it's just eh. And when like when he's playing against like out of conference and not top twenty, I mean, when he's playing not to, top twenty five teams, he plays well. But once he played Oklahoma and once he plays the top 25 teams, he doesn't play that well. So, And I really love Chubba Hubbard in this Oklahoma State team. They're my pick to win the Big 12. I'm I'm going with Oklahoma State. Let me remind you that they did beat Oklahoma, by the way. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay, I know. yeah. just he also, That's not like exactly looking that's, like such a great win this year. Yeah, yeah, great. In past years, that would have looked amazing. But this TCU, year, he also ooh, wins against TCU Tech and Oklahoma. I mean, they lost to Louisiana Lafayette, but I mean, that seems pretty good, to be honest. 
All right. You get a 50, so, JP, let's 50, hear it. 50% so, completion percentage. I think I just want to start out by saying this is the worst division in football once again <laughs> because um, Kansas State is currently ranked above Iowa State, and they're the second highest ranked team in the top 25. So this is the worst division in football right now. So Chuba Hubbard, I think, gives Oklahoma State the edge, along with the true freshman Shane Illingsworth. He came in week one when the offense started to struggle, and he really helped. JP, back to you. Probably the biggest game. And I, I know we have a better ranked game coming up here with SMU and Cincinnati, but probably the biggest game, in my opinion, uh, Michigan and Minnesota, number 18, Michigan, number 21, Minnesota. Biggest game in Big Ten this week as they get underway. Who do you like? You know, I went back and forth on this one, but I'm going to row the boat on this one. I'm going to take Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota, they get a lot of their players back from last year's team. And I think the one thing that scares me most, Harbaugh's record versus ranked opponents, you always have to bring it up. That's He's true. two and eleven. That's true. He's two and eleven versus ranked opponents. And Michigan's biggest weakness this year is at cornerback, which Minnesota is going to be able to exploit. And also, I'm not I'm not going to buy into the hype of Joe Milton, the Michigan quarterback yet. I'm not going to do it. On his career, he's this is a guy who hasn't even thrown a dozen passes yet. He's six for eleven for a touchdown and two interceptions, which he's coming in in garbage time and thrown. And He's all the hype's coming from Michigan coaches. So either way, <laughs> I mean, either way, whether I think this is going to be the game where we see, but I'm going to pump the brakes, the brakes on the hype for him right now. And I'm going to take Minnesota. I think the other weakness for Michigan that uh, you, you mentioned the cornerback, but I think it's just overall inexperience. They got to replace a lot of starters from last year. Um, meanwhile, for Minnesota, I know they lose Winfield, their talented defensive back. But they get Bateman back after he initially opted out. That's massive. He for unopted this team. out. Yeah, he unopted out. That's become a recurring theme in the Big Ten after <laughs> uh, um, a bunch of players decided to opt out at first. But he's coming back. That's big for them. Uh, row the boat. That's all I got to say. All right, Andrew. I am also going to row the boat here. Uh, I think. That Minnesota team, you know, they got more talent coming back. I feel like they, they're they a little bit more established. They got Rashad Bateman, Chris Ottman-Bell. They have Tanner Morgan. They got a pretty solid offensive line. And they had, let's not forget, they had an 11-win season last year. Yep. Um, and a lot of re- returning players. You know, and, and then you go back to the, the question marks at Michigan. I think it's just too much. You saw what happened to LSU when a ton of their production left. And, you know, I just think for Michigan, that might be the same situation. But I don't know. We'll see. Well, and I think this game and probably the Wisconsin game, biggest on the year for Minnesota, probably determine if they make that Big Ten championship again or not. God, I hate Michigan. I, <laughs> I hate Michigan. As you said, two ND and eleven, ND. two and eleven for Jim Harbaugh in the in the ranked games. I, I, oh my God, born a Notre Dame fan, they never never live up to the hype. Uh, I, I'm rowing the boat. Row I love the boat. Love we got PJ four, Fleck. Everyone, Row the we boat. We got four people I in the boat. I love PJ Everybody's Fleck. picking against the spread. Everybody's great, in the great boat. Great coach. I expect him to move on from Minnesota in a couple of seasons. Nope. nope. He's but staying there. I love I love <laughs> PJ Fleck in this offense. And I even though they lost Winfield, who is playing great in the NFL now, he by is. the way, um, I'm definitely taking Minnesota I, in this one. I think we might see... PJ uh, Fleck staying. I, I, I think <laughs> we might see a coach moving on for their team in that game, but I don't think it's on Minnesota. It might be on the other Ooh. side. Ooh. I would agree. I, I don't, he's I like don't Gus Mar- Malzahn. He's always on the hot seat. What twenty four seven? That's true. He's on the hot Gus seat Malzahn, all the time. He well, had Gus, a rough season. Gus Malzahn's contract's too big. They're not. They're yeah. not firing yeah, him. Yeah, his like, seat's a little bit like cooler because of that. One hundred nine million dollars to fire him or something. It's crazy. Yeah, the it's buyout, a huge buyout. The buyout yeah. is unbelievable. Is it um, worth it? <laughs> PJ Fleck is there to stay. By the way, I'm, I don't think he's leaving. Uh, final game here, big one for. Uh, Probably conference regular season title here, Feeney, SMU and Cincinnati. Yeah, why am I the only one that's excited for this game? This is gonna this is gonna be a really good game. It's a really good game. Because we get to row the boat instead. (laughs) (laughs) Look, uh the Bearcats come in ranked number nine in the nation. SMU comes in at sixteen, but SMU is actually still favored to win. Um it's a very big game for the athletic American Athletic Conference, probably the biggest one that this this conference has had uh this season so far, other than Memphis and UCF. Um it's it, um Cincinnati has really relied on their defense uh to win them games and it and they do but they really lack on offense and they struggle to make the big play. SMU however thrives on offense behind Shane Shane Bu- Bukele or Bukele? 
I don't know. I don't know. I think it's tough. Yeah, it's a tough name. But who is a very strong Heisman contender. Uh, That offense is really hard to stop. Cincinnati has not played a game since October 3rd. And I think that will play a very big part in the game. Cincinnati will most likely come out rusty in the first half. I think that SMU and Shane Buchel will capitalize off of poor Cincinnati first half, build a big enough lead to maintain, to to sustain themselves through the second half, and pull out the dub on Saturday night. I'll go against you there, and I'll take Cincinnati in that one. Nice. I am also going to go with Cincinnati. I think I'll SMU. Take Cincinnati, JP. I think SMU. They, too many close games for me. Too lame. They barely pulled that one out. Memphis. They pulled out a win there. That's a pretty good win for them. But Texas State first game of the season only one by seven. Too too many question marks there. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. You know, I'm going to make your day, Andrew, <laughs> because em. I take am going to take Let's Cincinnati go. in this one. <laughs> um, I think Cincinnati pulls this out barely. And I do agree with you that they are going to be rusty in the first half. But I think that they do have a good enough offense with Desmond Ryder to be able to pull it out in the second half. Real quick here, upset picks before we leave. I'm going to take Maryland over Northwestern. Northwestern, not a great season last year. And I I think the Big Ten was a good spot to find uh, an upset pick this week because... You know, the spreads have to be greater than 10, but they haven't. nobody's seen these Big Ten teams play. So I think you could see some upsets. Northwestern only two, three and nine last year. So their only wins coming over Illinois, UMass, and UNLV. So they only won Pretty one, talented one, group of team there. Only <laughs> won one conference game, and it was against mm-hmm. Illinois. So not impressive. And Maryland, they have an interesting decision to make here. Lance Legendre or Talia Tagovailoa hey. at quarterback. They still haven't made a decision. That one will be interesting to see, but I think no matter what, Maryland upsets Northwestern. Pretty solid pick there. I agree with you. Big Thank 10's you. probably the best, best place to look for an upset pick this week. I'm going to go with NC State over UNC. Man, that loss to FSU did not look good last week. Were you there? I was there. He was there. I Feeney, was there. Feeney and I, first and hand, I picked it. Yeah. Feeney so firsthand witnessed that uh, absolute collapse there and the three drop passes to end the game. Ooh, that absolutely was bad. brutal for you. Are you UNC. worried at all about the quarterback, though? Nope. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just hoping that, you know, UNC has one of those games where they just kind of lapse on offense like they did a little, I mean, a little bit of yeah. last game. So. Give me NC State. Here. It was. He it says was the sad. Big Ten's the best place to look for the upset, and then he doesn't. I mean, they, <laughs> other than that game, there were no other like ups, there, were, upset there were they were all speak. close. Really all the not. picks were close in the. Big I'm gonna I'm gonna be on. I'll say my upset pick in a second, but I want to talk about that FSU game real quick. That FSU quarterback, uh, Keld something Travis. His last name's Travis. Travis. Mm-hmm. Look, Jordan. No, it's his Jordan last name's Travis. Travis. I don't. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan Travis. Travis. That's what it is. He played phenomenal. I don't care what you say. Some of the throws that he was making <laughs> No, were it was ridiculous. weird because last season he came into games and he didn't play that well. He played incredibly average and this year he's coming in and he's playing out of his mind. All right, yeah. Beanie, let's hear that upset yeah, pick. Yeah, my upset pick, I am going to go with UTEP over Charlotte. Haven't heard a lot about Charlotte this season. Don't understand why they're favored by 15 points, so I'm going <laughs> to stick with UTEP. All right, so let me talk about a team that probably nobody's heard of, Arkansas State. Arkan- I'm picking Arkansas State over Appalachian State. I think the main reason that they're going to win is because of their offense. They rotate quarterbacks between Lane Hatcher and Logan Bonner. When you look at it, Hatcher is an Alabama transfer. He's been coached by Nick Staben and Steve Sarkeesian. He was a three-star recruit to Alabama. Combined, they've thrown for 1,800 yards and 21 touchdowns. They've only had four combined interceptions, and only one of those was by Hatcher. Last week against Georgia State, Hatcher had four touchdowns, and Bonner had three. They're three and two, and they've already beat a ranked team this year. And Appalachian State last year was decided by five points, and they're coming off a quarantine, and they have their first practice since that two-week quarantine was Monday, and they're playing today. So they've only had three days to prepare for this game. I think that's going to affect them, and I think we're going to see... This is going to be one of those games where we see uh, the when you see Corona really affecting games, and especially division games in this case. Well, that game's tonight, JP, so we can... Uh, hey, we'll see. I'll we go, can I see will be if going you move, into Saturday with a two-point lead on Cardinals. No, we can see if you move to 0-5 and upset picks on the air because 
What Let, is that let's, chart? Re- let's remind the listeners that you've never gotten oh, one man. right. What's what's his record? It's oh, been and rough. Four, oh, and 14 all time. It's been rough. You're worse than Harbaugh against ranked teams. <laughs> Oof. Ouch. It's been rough. Hey, you know, I've got some close ones, but the Louisiana kicker decided to uh, all yeah, of a sudden become guy. Rodrigo we, we do love that guy. We we love love that guy. He missed a 30-yard field goal. He's a legend, he's a legend goal. on the podcast. He missed a 24-yard <laughs> field goal and a 30-yard field goal. Great, makes a 51-yarder. Legend. Great performance. Doesn't make sense. Hey, Go, going down in I the podcast Hall of Fame right there. Hey, oh, man. Big, um, big game in the NFL tonight. Could determine first uh, the playoff spot and the, for the Giants and the Eagles. Both one and five. <laughs> That's the <laughs> weirdest thing. That division is the worst Could division determine well, the playoff actually, spot. Actually, it's one and five versus one, four, and one. Let oh, me get that right. Yep. Oh, you're right, um, you're right, but you're right. That'll pretty much do it for this week on the podcast. Uh, make sure to tune in again next week on the NBC Sports Podcast where we'll have the chance to preview Maris versus Arabian Mountain in the second region game of the season. Once again, Maris vs. Druid Hills canceled for this Friday. Uh, but thanks for tuning in as always, and we'll see you next week on the NBC Sports Podcast. On behalf of Connell Scruggs, J.P. Eisenhower, and Andrew Feeney, my name's Andrew Sullivan, signing off.